The title of our uh, teleconference presentation today is Rosicrucian Exercises, a Foundation for Daily Living. In fact, the format of this uh, uh, event will actually be, we'll do one continuous integrated exercise. We'll have a series of exercises uh, with, within it. And it'll be representative of the many Rosicrucian exercises that we do as students or are available to those becoming Rosicrucian students. So the Rosicrucian studies systematically guide us in developing self-mastery and ways to be of service. And by self-mastery, we mean many things, but we mean the full maturation of the human being, the full rapport with the, the cosmic, the capacity to live in harmony with all levels of being or all senses of being from the physical, the mental, the emotional, the psychic, and the overall arching spiritual, but also in harmony with our environment, our body and the cosmos. Now, part of this process of self-mastery uh, is the crucial experiential practice of the Rosicrucian exercises. And as I've mentioned, we'll do some of the key exercises in an integrated manner uh, today. One's referred to as the overall meditation exercise, cosmic attunement with the celestial sanctum, metaphysical aid healing, visualization, uh, vowel sounds, and more. Uh, even if you're well experienced in these matters, I'll introduce a few new uh, ways to look at these things. And I think we'll find it a very enriching uh, activity. I know many of you have uh, a physical culture or physical routine that you do in terms of calisthenics or exercises or running and jogging. In some ways, what we're gonna do over the next uh, approximately uh, 55 minutes will be similar, but it'll be in a, um, include the physical, but it'll also include all levels of our, our being. Uh, and I think you'll find it very enriching and in rejuvenating. And in a way, it strengthens us and helps us for a strong foundation to do what we need to do and fulfill our found our uh, mission in life and find the way to self-mastery, which is our true nature. At this point, I'm just going to put up some uh, uh, slides to help inspire us, uh, as often I do. And you'll, uh, I think you'll be seeing now uh, a tri-pitch or a three-panel work by the inspired Rosicrucian artist Nico Mendes Gomez. It's entitled Life, Light, and Love Tri-Pitch. The first one on the left uh, uh, and was actually done in 1971, and the one in the middle, 1973, and the one on the right in 1970. But the artist intended these to go together as a unified whole, as a, tr a trinity, but also an underlying unity. One thing that's rather striking about them is if you look closely here on the one on the right, you'll see the book Lieber 777. I'll give you the uh, reference for that. That's a key meditation exercise document of the Rosicrucians. And it's available whether you're a student of the order or not. And you'll notice some things here with our home, what's referred to Rosicrucians as their home sanctum, the way we study in our home. We pass through the teachings in a highly systematic way, uh, week by week. There's various teachings to read and exercises to practice and some of those things we're going to go over with today. But you see there's a ru inspiring rising up, the dove descending, the grail, the summum bonum of life, the achievement of self-mastery. In the middle here, I think many of you will recognize the, the, um, some things referencing a Rosicrucian temple, including the altar and above it, the Shekinah. The master Yeheshawab, if you could think of the, yourself there as in, in a state of self-mastery that you're needing to realize that is your birthright in a way you already have. It's a matter of coming into it. Again, there's expansive energy at the center when one comes into that full understanding. Um, and on the, so in a way we have like the, the temple level here, the home sanctum level here, uh, and then moving here, we already have the the laboratorium of the cosmos, so the world and our activities and our career and so forth. We see the earth, the cosmic keyboard, such by the keys there, because the Rosicrucians talk about all the tremendous sea of vibrations that we learn to be a master musician uh, to play in terms of having harmony with all and mastering our, our life. So in a way, there's sort of like three levels here, and we'll work with all of these as we pass through our exercises here, like for our individual home sanctum work, work in the temple, but also work in the cosmos in our environment at a larger extent. 
So I invite you now to get prepared for our exercises. Um, you, know, you take in these uh, inspiring works of art. And while you're doing that, um, I suggest keep your eyes open and take a few deep positive breaths. And by that, the Rosicrucians mean when you breathe in, hold the inhalation as long as it's comfortable and then exhale. You'll find that it has a tremendous charging effect in the body. You'll find there's a tingling of what Rosicrucians refer to as the, co the cosmic essence or the vital life force. This breathing exercise is very simple, but it's very profound and it'll have the physiological effect, but because we're doing this as students of mysticism, the art of science of love, we're spiritualizing it to go deeper in its sensation. I invite you to experience this. So as you look at these three works of art, hold the inhalation and then let go when it's comfortable. Don't strain yourself and then breathe. Don't hold the exhalation, but you can do it slowly. And if it's comfortable, breathe through your nostrils because that'll tend to force you to breathe even deeper into your lungs and bring the vital life force that comes with the oxygen and the other chemical constants in the air deeper into your lungs. And then that will allow it to go into the bloodstream which circulates and will give you that added effect of the vital life force throughout your body. You know, each cell in the body is charged with the cosmic consciousness or the consciousness of all. And I say these things not just uh, as uh, something of an intellectual nature, but these are ex things that you can experience. This is very important, the Rosicrucian teachings, to have the experience. Then one can even have a much more deeper understanding intellectually and otherwise. And then we're more able to assist others from our firsthand experience. Because all knowledge needs to be applied and will come into full understanding when we apply it in service. In this manner, we fulfill our purpose in life. Now, what I want you to do is to take uh, the thumb of your dominant hand. So if you're what's referred to as right-handed, take your right hand. But if you're, you're left-handed, take your left hand. Or you, if you work equally with both, take either, you, I, you could take uh, either one or the one you prefer. And then take your thumb and your first two fingers. So the two fingers that are that are closer uh, to the thumb and press the fingertips together. And then take those fingers and the thumb that you've got pressed together and press them firmly, but not hard in the lower part of the hollow at the back of the neck. And while you do that, breathe in deeply and hold the breath in. So take the fingers, breathe in, and press in that hollow in the lower part of the back of the neck. And hold the breath in while you press there. And when you feel you need to exhale, remove your fingers and your thumb from that part of the neck. You see, we're charging that part of the body with the vital life force. This allows the brain and our mind to be much more alert. So try again. So we'll do it three times. So a second time, come back, press there while you're holding the breath in. When you can't hold so long or more comfortably, let go again. This is a wonderful exercise to use if you're ever tired and you need to have concentration to do something important or an emergency situation. This will give you the strong attent attentive capacity for at least several minutes to do what needs to be done. So a third time. And when you're no longer comfortable, exhale. And then continue to take some deep breaths of a neutral nature when you're ready. These, this exercise is also closely related to the contact healing treatments that you learn in the Rosicrucian studies. They can be of great value in assisting the health of one's uh, family and under certain circumstance others. They'll complement the metaphysical aid healing ex exercise that we will do uh, shortly as well. So at this time, I invite you to do the overall exercise with me as we've heightened this alertness. 
by doing our first exercise. Now our second exercise, just close your eyes and continue to enjoy deep neutral breaths, neither holding the inhalation or holding the exhalation. Just enjoy the beautiful rhythm of the breath. In tune with the cosmic, the Rosicrucians use the term cosmic to mean all natural and spiritual laws and the divine intelligence or the universal intelligence back of the cosmos. It's imbued in our body, but it's imbued in all things. All creatures, all manifestations in the universe. And part of our work as students of mysticism is to be one with that cosmic and to work in harmony with it and emulate it as a co-creator with the divine. In this, there's the greatest meaning and understanding in life, the greatest enrichment and the greatest well-being and health. So continue to take some deep neutral breaths. So we're applying the law of duality and the law of polarity by the inhalation and the exhalation. They're both forming a duality. But the attunement it takes us in forms a unity through the law of unity. And when you're ready, I invite you to concentrate on the tips of your toes. And if you're comfortable, keep taking some slower, deep breaths. And we'll do what the Rosicrucians refer to as the overall exercise. And we'll take this, our time with this because our whole period here is this one integrated exercise with many individual exercises. But I'll present certain things to you as we move through. You may wish to picture a white light at the tip of your toes or some other color that's conducive to your need at this time. You may wish to choose a beautiful royal purple or a deep navy blue or a much brighter yellow. It's up to you what you feel you need. Go with your inner intuitive guidance. And feel as you concentrate on the tips of your toes, think of there the blood that's circulating, especially after these deeper breaths we've been taking, it's even more charged with a cosmic essence, the vital life force. Feel that enriching tingling. Imagine each cell there that has the cosmic consciousness, the cosmic consciousness of the cosmic imbued in it. You may be surprised by how strong the tingling is, but it's a good thing. It's an enriching thing, it's healing. And just pass up through your toes, move further back on both your left and right foot, the soles of your feet, the tops of your feet, but also the bones and the sinew, all the wonderful system and order that's in the temple of the body, just as in the temple of the cosmos. And then keep moving up through the arch of your foot and your ankles, the heel, and then gradually start moving up through your lower leg. And you can sense the skin and the hair there, all the blood vessels, but even right down to the atomic structure, all the atoms and molecules orbiting about, just like the, the moon orbits around the earth and the earth around the sun and our solar system around the galaxies. There's all these orbits within our body. And gradually move up through the lower leg to the knee in the front of the back of the knee. You may wish to invoke the law of gratitude for this capacity we have to work with our body and use it to learn the lessons of life and fulfill our mission in life. And then gradually move up into the upper legs. Sense the muscles, the great structure and musculature there. The blood that's flowing, the nervous system, all the important messages that are going through the body operated by the subconscious it's a great form of intelligence that we have as one of our phases of consciousness. 
we learn about in the order and how to work with. And then keep moving up towards your mid body. You can feel where you're seated, whether it's beyond a blanket or the grass or a chair or lying on a bed. Just feel the sensation there. Gradually move up through that midsection of the body. You may wish to think of the solar plexus, that great nexus of nerves that's there. Important place for psychic phenomena and psychic impressions and emotion. And gradually move up through the lower part of that midsection of our body, all the vital organs that are work there for us, guided by the intelligence of the subconscious mind, ultimately linked and imbued with the cosmic mind as all intelligence is. Think of the spine and the great work that it does as a cosmic axis in our body. Gradually move up and keep in mind both the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. As we're taking, taking our deeper breaths, we're harmonizing those two systems that are one unity and part of an enlightenment of a human being is to have those two systems, of the nervous system working in harmony together. Do not underestimate these matters. As we go through in a way we're applying the law of suggestion, we give a suggestion to the subconscious of an enriching and noble nature that it can take it as a law into the subconscious and it'll work with it and act on it and will be strengthened because of that. Gradually move up to the heart, the great pumping center in the body and a great seat of love and other emotions in our body and the wonderful work that it does for us. Concentrate on it and heal it and rejuvenate it. Increase its capacity to send the vital life force from the oxygen and other chemical elements that come into our body. Enjoy this experience. Feel a degree of exhilaration by this work and worship of our order in the temple of the body that houses the mighty master within, the divine intelligence guiding us that we're ever working to be in rapport with. And think of the thymus just above the heart and the great work it does for us is also one of the endocrine glands and the secretions that it makes through the body and its special functions. And then gradually move up further to the chest region, back and front, further up the, sp the, the spine, or cosmic axis in the temple of the body. And gradually come up to just when you're starting to reach the shoulders. And when you've got to that point, we'll come back there in a little while, but shift your attention when you're ready to the tips of your fingers. And we'll go through your arms just like you went through your legs. I think already you may be feeling that wonderful tingling of the cosmic essence, the vital life force in your fingertips, just as you're experiencing now in your toes. Because as we pass through the body, that, that tingling sensation will continue. We're charging the whole body with a tonic effect. Pass up through the fingernails and the tips of the fingers and the wonderful structure that's there with the bo bones and the sinew, the skin, fascia that the Grand Master has been emphasizing for us, the nervous system, and up through the fingers and the knuckles. We come to the main body of the hand and through the thumb, the front and back of your hand, the palm. We just express and evoke the law of gratitude for all the great work that our hands can do for us in being a co-creator with the divine through artwork scientific work, through cooking, and through other myriad things that we help manifest in the world through our cosmic attunement and our assistance of the temple of the body. And come to your wrists and gradually move up through your lower arms to your elbows, and then up through the biceps, the upper arms, gradually come back to where you left off, just as we were reaching the shoulders. 
and then move through the shoulders and then up through the neck and give a little extra time to the thyroid, an important endocrine gland and psychic center there. The front and back of the neck, the throat. Gradually move up into the head, the upper region of our temple, the body. Concentrate on the jaw, the teeth, the tongue, the back of the head, the ears. And you may wish to be continued as you take deeper breaths rhythmically. Continue to concentrate on that light being in that part of the body that you're moving through. Take in the nose and sense the breath there. The eyes. The eyebrow between the two eyes, the special center there connecting to the pineal and to degree the pituitary known as the third eye. And move back into the brain and the back of the head all the tremendous system and order in there and the trillion connections through the nervous system and our neurology. And take a little time with the pituitary gland just below the pineal gland in the center. A little extra concentration on the pineal gland and the psychic center there. And then when you're ready, dwell in the center of your, approximately the center of your brain, where there's a P-shaped endocrine gland the great pineal gland, which dampens down rates of vibration to a much higher number of hertz or rate of vibration on the cosmic keyboard. They come in to reveal to us impressions through the subconscious and the subjective mind, or subjective consciousness and the objective mind. Give a little extra time at that center of the brain, the pineal gland. Seat of the soul, as the traditional Rosicrucian René Descartes used to say. And when you're ready, expand up to the upper part of the brain and sense the upper skin and the head there and sense the vibrations that are radiating out from the head of electromagnetic nature and much higher rate of vibration on the cosmic keyboard. And when you're ready, Let's go through two more times. So we'll go through three times for the physical body. But you can go through a little, go through at your own pace, but you may wish to go a little quicker. I won't guide you as much this time. Start in your toes and move through the toes to your main body of your feet. And then through the ankles, the lower legs, I think the second time around, you'll find that charge of the cosmic essence and the light of life force is intensifying even more. Gradually come up to the knee, back and front, and the lower leg, from the knee to the upper leg. Enjoy the enrichment and tonic effect of this exercise as, you, as we work to heal ourselves and make ourselves whole. And as you come up to the midsection of the body, keep in mind the nervous system on this, throughout the body as you move up and the vital organs there and the sp spinal cord, the various bones and the rib cage as you move up past the kidneys and the digestive system, moving gradually up to the heart and it's great work for us. The thymus and also then gradually move up in the upper chest area. And when you reach the shoulders, refocus your attention on the tips of your fingers and you may wish to keep a deeper rhythmic breath going Possibly using that particular color of light you chose as you move through the fingertips, the fingernails, and the fingers. Your, your knuckles and your palm, back of your hand, through to the wrist, lower arms back in front of the elbows and inside, and then up through the bicep and the upper arm. Gradually come back to that 
our area where we left off in the shoulders. Move through the shoulders to the nape of the neck, front of the neck, the thyroid, the throat, and then into the jaw and the head, lower section. Move through the lower parts of the head, including the ears. Lips, mouth, and nostrils into the eyes again, third eye, and then move in and circulate around in the brain, particularly the pituitary gland and the pineal gland at the center of the head. And gradually move up to the upper part of the brain and the scalp, the hair. And when you're ready, move down to the tips of your toes and I'll be silent as you move through your body. One more time. Now, once you've completed the third time through the body, we're gonna go through the body one more time, a fourth time, because the overall exercise can be used in various expanded ways. And I'll illustrate one of those ways for you now. If you're ready with me to go through a fourth time, we're gonna go through different facets of our life as if they were our body. In a way, those facets form a body. As you move through your legs, go from your tips to your toes, Think of your well-being of your health overall. As you pass through the toes and the feet, think of your health and that aspect of your life. Gradually move up through the legs, charging your well-being of your health overall. And once you've reached the mid part of your body, shift to another facet of your life, your family. And move gradually up to the lower part of your body, charging your family life, invigorating it in a harmonious and healthy way. And once you've got sort of midway up your mid body, switch over and think of friendships in your life as you move up past the heart and that up, upper section of the upper of the mid body. Once you've reached your shoulders, thinking about your friendships, let's refocus on the tips of your fingers. And think now of personal administrative and household matters. Charge them up as you move through your body, through the, in particular, the tips, of the fingers and the hands, the lower arm, think of your personal administrative and household matters. We're doing this to put in order your entire life be guided to how to act through the assistance of this exercise. And when you've gone through your lower arms, you've reached your elbows, go through your upper arms, but now think about your business work and your career or activities that you do uh, if you're retired and move through the upper arms putting them into system and order, revitalizing them, charging them. And now when you've reached your shoulders, think of your Rosicrucian studies and various studies that you're involved in an education of an educational nature. Move through your shoulders and your neck, including past the thymus. Go through there gradually through your neck. 
And when you've reached your head, shift from concentrating on your studies to service and how you assist others and all beings in various ways and move through your head. This practice will assist as we move through the head, charging and revitalizing the works of service, give us impressions of things where we can be of service, filling our mission in life. Gradually move through the head. And once you've reached the top of your head, and we've passed through these different phases of your life as a body, let us now engage in another meditation exercise that works in beautiful harmony and is often good to do right after the overall exercise. That is cosmic attunement with the celestial sanctum. We'll send now to the heights of the celestial sanctum. To do that, continue with your deep breaths and we'll use a prayer. We'll apply an exercise with both an invocation and a prayer. Be a little different than one you're used to, but it was been given to us by the order. And you say, I invite you to say with me as we prepare ourselves to ascend to the heights of the celestial saint. May the divine essence of the cosmic cleanse me of all impurities of mind and body that I may commune with the celestial sanctum. May my mortal consciousness be so enlightened that any imperfections of my thinking may be revealed to me. And may I be given the power of will to correct them. I humbly petition that I may perceive the fullness of nature and partake thereof ever consistent with the cosmic good. So be it in truth, so mote it be. Now, fighters and soarers and participants, let us begin to ascend to the heights of the celestial sanctum. Picture yourself rising up from the area where you are, the room where you are, or the geographic area, up over the house and the home. Start to rise up quicker and see the neighborhood where you live even the entire town and city start to take it in and feel a degree of exhilaration as you rise up. Use great inward strength, but work with the cosmic and the God within you so that this can be done with ease. And as you rise up faster and faster, take in the province or state where you live and see the great weather systems below and beautiful manifestations of nature, which may be plains or mountains, lakes and so forth. Feel the exhilaration of the ascent. Feel the life force tingling even stronger in your body as we ascend. Now to start to take in the entire country, the great nation where you live. See its different features, geographic forms, where there may be some oceans nearby or other countries nearby. And now take in the continent where you live and even now the Northern hemisphere and then the great beautiful blue jewel of the earth and sense it's revolving about its axis and sense down below the various activities that people are doing in service and well-being for each other and assist them by radiating love down in there to help guide them. But as you continue up higher and higher now, take in the entire solar system the red planet Mars, the huge planet Jupiter, the great rings of Saturn, and also the great fiery ball of the sun that we're revolving about as we spin around on the earth when we're on the earth plane. Sense the great system and order, of the planets and the solar system, and there are different effects that they have on our subtle being. And as you rise up higher, not only see the sun, our star, but see other myriad stars, pulsars and quasars and binary stars and supernovae and great jets 
issuing out from black holes and even start to take in the entire Milky Way and the great black hole at its center that we revolve about. And since the great spiraling arms of the Milky Way, including the arm which is close to our home the solar system, and continue to pass by faster and faster than myriad stars, far faster than the speed of light because we're transcending space and time. We have that infinite capacity through the cosmic consciousness within us. And pass right out from the solar, this uh, Milky Way galaxy and start to take it in and see its great spiraling arms from the outside. And see other solar, see not only other galaxies, but nebulae, some other galaxies that are spiraling, just like our Milky Way galaxy and move further and further away. And now start to take in clusters of galaxies in vastness and space. But we're not va we're not daunted by this great vastness, we're exhilarated by it because it helps us attune with the infinite nature within us through the cosmic rise up faster and faster, taking in more and more of the vastness of the universe and its great system and order and beauty. And since all the intelligence imbued throughout the areas you're passing by, the nebulae and galaxies and clusters of galaxies, since the cosmic back, the universal intelligence back of all this great display of the universe, as we move up faster and faster, we also start to sense not only how we sense the revolution of the planets around the earth, I should say around the sun as we move, move through the earth, but also how our Milky Way galaxy spirals around a, a great center black hole. We start to sense how the universe itself revolves around a great axis. Sense that motion, stupendous in its nature. Sense now the location of that great cosmic axis and move towards its midpoint. Come closer and closer to the midpoint of the cosmic axis about our cosmos revolves. And slow up as you come to that midpoint. And as you arrive there, picture your celestial sanctum there. It may be an inspiring cathedral or a gurdwara, a stupa, synagogue mosque or some other inspiring work of architecture like the, the Grand Temple, the Rosicrucian or Amorque in San Jose or an inspiring place in nature. Come in to that celestial sanctum and fill it in with the sights and the sounds, the smells, the incense, beautiful symbolism that may be there, for example, in stained glass windows. Sense the presence of other fratters and sorers or seekers of like mind there to attune with the cosmic. You may wish to visualize the chief executive officer, the imperative of our order there conducting special convocation. Fill it in as you wish in a sacred way. Make it real. Make it vital. Make it profoundly meaningful. Use your emotions to work to help attune you to the cosmic. As we work with the intellect and the reasoning and the emotions, those two points draw us through the law of the triangle to a manifestation, a realization, an intuitive impressions, and cosmic attunement at the third point. And when you've filled the picture in, just take some time to dwell there, applying the law of cosmic attunement, dwell there in the stillness. Continue to enjoy the vital life force that's charging your whole body. Just like the master of the Rosicrucian tradition, Jacob Bohm mentioned, the human being is a being of light, truer. Experience that not as a concept, but as a lived reality now, as you dwell in what Rosicrucians refer to as peace profound or the most profound peace.
if you find your mind wandering, just lovingly and gently take it back to the celestial sanctum in your breath, at the center of your being, at the center of the cosmos. For as we made this great ascent upward, we also at the same time made a great dis descent inward, deep into ourselves, where the master within is housed, at the center of our heart, at the center of the universe. They match through the law of correspondence as above, so below. Just dwell in stillness and exhilaration at this great center. When we meditate in this fashion, there may be various impressions that come to us. Just take note of them, but keep returning to the breath and dwelling in stillness at this great center. We're not avoiding anything. We're just dwelling in stillness. Feel whatever there is to feel, the physical, the mental, emotional, the psychic, and the overall arching spiritual and mystic. Be open to whatever is needed, to whatever may come forth from deep within the center. Now there are various reasons to meditate and ascend to the heights of the celestial sanctum. One is just as we've been doing for our general enlightenment and well-being, that then we can come back charged, rejuvenated, to fulfill our duties in life and service, assistance of others. Another reason is to seek an answer to an important question in our life that isn't readily answered by any other means. Can't readily look it up in an encyclopedia or in a book or from our earlier experience or someone we know is quite knowledgeable or readily in touch with. We have to use also not only our existing knowledge, but the infinite resources and storehouse of the God within. If there's a particular question you have at this time you'd like to ask, you could do so. And then we can continue to dwell in the stillness. But make it a a, sh a short, distilled, concise question, if you wish to do so at this time. You may wish to view it as on the screen of your, in the front of your screen of your consciousness as letters that are in white against a black background, or even in a fiery, fiery bright letters. See the question spelled out, and you can also say it in your mind. But make sure that it's an important question not answered, readily answered by any other means. And when you visualized it well in front of your mind's eye, hold it there for about half a minute and then just release it into the subconscious, confident that an answer will come forward during this meditation period or later in the day or tomorrow. And you can also continue to visualize that question and have it in your mind when you meditate later today or tomorrow as well. Because sometimes an answer will flash before it in the mind or sometimes you'll get clues at a time. The point is to be on the lookout, to be vigilant. When things that people say comes to your mind, sometimes the whole impression and answer will come or comes in pieces like that if we're aware and vigilant in our life. So at this time, ask that question if you wish, and then we'll dwell in peace profound before we go on to other exercises of the Rosicrucian order.
And once you've released the question of the subconscious, just dwell in stillness like you were in a great theater and you're expecting the curtains to rise with the answer or an important part of the answer. Dwell in anticipation as if you're in a theater for a great performance. Now let us continue with fur further spiritual operations of the work and worship of the Rose Krishna Ramwak. You've released your question and be vigilant for answers that may come as a, an exhilarating response. You know, ideas will flood forward on how to solve the issue or deal with the matter you had. It's one of the special experiences in life, being fully alive. This time I invite you to undertake an act of visualization, one of the various, various important exercises of visualization of of uh, the order is the exercise of visualization along with meditation. Just as we've taken time to visualize a question, similar to that when one goes to the heights of the celestial sanctum for general enlightenment, often you'll find answers coming forward to you that you were implicitly asking in your life or the outer self needed to know and the inner self assisted us. So this practice of getting answers to questions is working both implicitly and explicitly in our lives. In conjunction with that, there may be something you'd like to visualize that you'd like to bring into manifestation into your life. This is a very deep practice because it has, from an esoteric perspective, it indicates how the human being is a co-creator with the divine. We emulate the cosmic by, in this act, which is fundamental fulfilling our meaning and purpose in life. Is there something that you'd like to manifest in your life? It may be a new relationship. It may be a situation of feeling more comfortable in some particular aspect of your life. It may be a, your health condition. We'll work on the health through the overall exercise and metaphysical aid that we'll do. But pick if there's something that this time you'd like to visualize it may be an important presentation you have to give. Maybe it's a job interview you need to go to. Whatever it is, take some time now, if you wish, to visualize it, make it real, just like you made your celestial sanctum real by sights and sounds and experience. Make sure it's something that not only benefits yourself, but others. In other words, it's a value as an act of service. It's not selfish, that it allows you to be of greater service to others. And it's a value not only to yourself, but others in that sense. Fill it in now. Give it an emotional charge, just like we did with the question we asked. As you fill it in, I'll give you some time and then I'll indicate when to release it suddenly. Fill in your visualization, what it will be experienced like and what others will, how others will be uplifted by it. Fill that in, make it real in all senses from the physical through to, through to this overall spiritual. This is part of the reason why the Rosicrucians teach us to observe well, because it helps us visualize and be a co-creator with the divine in this matter. Now, if you're ready soon to complete your visualization, 
and hold it. I'll say shortly when to release it. Now release it now into the subconscious and we can say together, it pleases the cosmic, it is done. So be it in truth, so mote it be. Now, fratters and sorrows and participants, let us continue some more in the work and worship of the Rosicrucian order. At this time, let us join with the Council of Souls in radiating love and well-being to all those who petition for metaphysical aid, for, for health and healing for the Rosicrucian order, the Grand Lodge, possibly your affiliate bodies or those persons you know who are in need. We'll do this as a silent council. So radiate love and well-being. We've ascended to the heights of celestial sanctum. We've worked as a co-creator with the divine. Let us continue in that avenue. Radiate love and well-being now to all those in need, all those who petitioned the cosmic, the order, all those who need, know they're in need, and all sentient beings throughout the cosmos in need. Radiate love and well-being from your heart and your mind. Let it go out with great strength and well-being. Feel it flow out. At a certain point, I'll sense, I think you'll sense that it'll speed up because you'll know that it's being received. I think as you do this work with a silent council, you'll find that there's a wonderful tonic effect on yourself. For as we are, work as a channel for the healing of others, we help heal ourselves, applying the law of cause and effect, even though it wasn't intended, intended as such. As you give, so you shall receive. Continue to radiate the love and well-being. At a certain point, I think you'll find it just keeps flowing without you having to consciously keep it flowing. And when that happens, just continue to dwell in peace profound at this great center, the center of your being, the center of the cosmos. Now, while this aid continues to flow, I invite you to follow those radiations out from your being as if your mind's expanding out to encompass the universe. Your mind becoming the cosmic mind, expanding out to encompass the entirety of the cosmos. And otherwise, be one with the cosmic mind. Be the cosmic mind. Assume the cosmic mind. Now, keeping with this attunement with the cosmic and before we formally conclude this period of exercises, we're going to do another Rosicrucian exercise that will assist in this cosmic attunement. We're going to apply a vowel sound. And I'll have references for all the things we've been doing It'll be in the group chat later. We're going to use the vowel sound 
ohm, but also a special extension of it, the vowel sound ohm men. I invite you to sound ohm men, often known as amen, but more properly pronounced as ohm men. It helps with manifesting a, co uh, a cosmic, or in other words, forming a cosmic manifestation that we are doing as we attune with the cosmic. It will heighten this experience for us. So I invite you to inhale with me now and tone this vowel sound. We'll do it three times. Om man. And when you're ready, inhale a second time. Amen. For the third and final time, take a deep breath. Amen. Now let us begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum for writers and sorcerers and participants. You may wish to express your gratitude for this opportunity to tune with the cosmic and to fulfill the law of service. And this way we'll apply the law of gratitude. Gradually, let's make our passage back through the cosmos, through the myriad clusters of galaxies and the supernovae, all the beautiful stars and stellar phenomena, the black holes and the quasars and pulsars and binary stars. See all the spiraling galaxies and myriad stars. The great system and order of this revolving universe. Gradually come back to the Milky Way galaxy and see its great spiraling arms. Particularly the spiraling arm where our home is. Go back into it. See, pass by myriad stars till finally we come to our star, the sun and the solar system. And then come to the beautiful blue jewel of the earth. See, the hemisphere where you live and the continent where you live and then the country, the province or state and the city or area we are. And before we finish up, let us say together, in regard to all the spiritual operations, sending a metaphysical aid, let us say, please as the cosmic it is done once again. So be it in truth, so mote it be. And let us also say together, May the God of my heart sanctify this attunement of self with the celestial sanctum. So be it in truth, so mote it be. And let us come back to their neighborhood and the home where we are, back into the room or area or field where we are, back into the chair or wherever we're seated or lying down. Feel the temple of the body, housing the master within, connected with all and its infinite resources tune with the cosmic now and forever. And when you're ready, you may wish to stretch and open your eyes a little bit. Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs>